Hey, right. Welcome to the two. Well, the filmmaker Jared Gahan and uh, the subject uh, and producer to uh, answer some questions. Give them a very severe grilling, I suggest. Oh my God! We should uh, also invite down here the, uh, oh, the star, star of Lesbo a go. And come on, Karen! <laughs> come on down! <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. This reunion, because like, I actually literally sat in my seat and was looking at the two of you during certain sequences. Because of course, Karen's not seen the film. Right. You saw the film. Oh yeah, I knew what. You maybe two incarnations, so you knew what there was. Yeah. There was the shaving scene that Andrew hadn't seen, but I warned him about. Oh, yeah, the shaving of his pubic hair from a punk rock thing wow. in two thousand and one. But yeah, but yeah the interesting, the, the, the uh, yeah, the tell-all sort of chemistry. Was there any truth to that? Was there some sort of thing? You know, was there a burning romance? Because I was oh, completely God. blind to all this. No. no. Yeah, I missed a lot of things that happened during the course of this movie, and it wasn't. No, no like I said, I was people. mad. I was completely yeah. insane at the time. Well, <laughs> can I just make a comment? It reminded me a little bit uh, of American Movie, which was yes. kind of poster, and the sense that yeah, kind of transcended background. the film that it was like making the film about. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the sense that. It was a kind of film about, you know what I mean, yeah, about absolutely. movie making itself, and also about that that movie making that's the f the first film where you kind of like stumble and fall a little and have a little fun. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was, if anything, an obsession with the character. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you imagine? You know, you you you're sitting in a video shop surrounded by you know thousands of films, but the the one film that you choose to emulate you know, is so obscure, so ridiculously niche, um, that it becomes this overriding obsession to try and, you know, get out there to um, what you think is a, is, a, is a public waiting for a Doris Wishman tribute. And, I mean, you know, that, that's, a, that's a, a declaration of madness in that statement right there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember at the time, you know, you, you were saying, why can't we make a nice film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, I, I remember the, there was lots of discussion about, well, you know, we, we, could, we could do like a romantic comedy. Or, or we, could, we could do, you know, something that normal people might like. I'm like, fuck normal people! <laughs> I do not remember that. Well, there you go. You've chosen to edit that bit out. <laughs> I was saying, that, that's what I was saying before. It felt like every time I interviewed someone about the movie, they'd have a story, and I, I felt like I missed a lot whilst I was making the film. Like I'd be too busy doing a setup, so something was happening over here, and then it was how many of the stories I was hearing were true, and so I would go back to someone and say, "I heard something about this. Do you think that's true?" And it would be fact checking as I was going. I was watching you too when he was talking about uh, wanting to be the next Meg Ryan. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But it was a lot of that. It was a lot of, and there was a lot of going to people and them not being able to recall anything. There was one actor that said uh, that he he did a lot of well, not method acting, but meth acting during the film. Oh, so he doesn't that? really remember it. Who no, was that? I don't want to say. Was that Bob? No, was no, I didn't interview him. I'm not gonna, you can't oh, get bring the whole cast out. Oh, they were all on bloody mess. Um, but yeah, another interesting, <laughs> another interesting story is we played the film in January at the Brisbane Underground Film Festival, which was uh, a, a slightly different edit to this, is the yeah. definitive edit. And I um, really want to thank Jesse, who is the Screaming Meanies, who did the entire score. And this is right over there in right the there. Uh, Mexican wrestling. <laughs> That's, that is my favourite thing about the film, the score, it's an incredible score, and the version played in Brisbane was about half Jesse's score and the other half was these other chaps, uh, so this is all, all of Jesse's score, but when we screened the Brisbane, screening when I was prepping the Les Boa Go Go Blu-ray that's going to play shortly, uh, I noticed in the credits that the festival organiser from Brisbane Underground Film uh, Festival was Nina Riddell, yeah. and I said to Stumpy, I go, I didn't know that she had anything to do with the film, and what was the caper with? Oh, she came to the initial production meeting and wrote her name down on a piece of paper and I forgot who worked on the film so I just went through a whole bunch of pieces of paper and put them in the credits. So there's a whole bunch of people credited and actually worked a day on the film which is pretty funny. So, <laughs> it's the nature of Les Boa Go Go. It's the though, nature really, of the beast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there was uh, Pauline who was probably the most cynical of the interviewees that you heard. She seemed a bit bitchy, wasn't she? She was, and she, um, know, she agreed to do the interview, and then when I was in Brisbane, uh, she wasn't returning any calls the day before I was due to do the interview. <laughs> then that morning of the interview, I'm frantically calling and texting her, and I didn't hear anything back. 
And then eventually she rang me back and said, look, just to be honest, I don't know if I want to dredge this up and talk about it. I wouldn't have anything nice to say about this film. <laughs> I said, look, that's perfect because it's going to add a bit of balance to it. <laughs> and, uh, and then the minute I rocked up on the door and I knock on the door and I said, hey, look, I'm Jared. She goes, Jared, you shot it. And I go, yeah, I did. And she goes, oh, that's different. Come on in. I'll tell you all about it. And I went, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. She hasn't gotten right over the, the loss of her red jacket. No, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad we could find the archive which footage of her proudly oh, showing it off to I, before it was destroyed. I had no idea that uh, you know it it got trashed and that mm. she was harboring this resentment. There's a lot I of didn't, resentment. I, I didn't think we so, trashed it, but no. I, I don't know what happened that night again. I was too busy over here. There was something happening, but I, I know those clothes did get torn. Yeah. Well, the red coat was though in a lot of. Oh, well, I know we film. used it a lot. Of course. So maybe that that was just it. So what made you decide to make the film after like ten years? Oh. Was there a just conscious decision to like kind of like do a kind of film? Of, did you realize you have enough footage and you get some yeah. interviews? Or? It, yeah, it was a, it was kind of a weird sort of thing because I think it was about two thousand and eleven. Andrew had spoken about maybe getting Lesbo or Go Go released on DVD again or even self publishing it. No, no, someone and had actually contacted me from oh, New South had. Wales. Right, okay. Um, is it coming out on DVD? Well, there's talk maybe of a release next year. We're in kind of discussions at the moment, okay. aren't we? Yeah. Of the well, doggone movie. Maybe. It's up for grabs. Um, but yeah, yeah, so uh, <laughs> but yeah, 2011, yeah. We, I, and so you more. said, can you put something small together? So I did an interview with yourself, Kim, yep. and I just did a quick bit. And it was like 25 minutes, and I gave it back to you. And I think I did the home end art and did all the stuff to mm. send it to you, and then nothing happened and then I don't know yeah, then, but then then you looked at it and said you know yeah, I, there's a story I, think in there, I think there's a film in there there's more of a story especially and when I was hearing stories come out of him and your mouth that I hadn't heard and I'm like because we just didn't talk about the film we made it we did mm. what we did and we didn't talk about it for like I don't know, eight years or so and then suddenly I heard all these really cool things I'm like well what else, what, what, what's everyone else got to say mm. like the story about the limo going around the Dendi? Did that happen? Because oh, you mean for the premiere? Yeah, because no, we didn't get it because we were on our way apparently. Yeah, well, I was already, I you know, curled up in a in a ball in the projection booth. I mean, yes, I, I had no idea what was going on, but apparently there was a limousine doing rounds of the the cinema, and a couple of people would get out, <coughs> then they'd uh, pick up a few more people around the corner, do the block. They come out. Yeah. Were you in the limo? I, I heard this story from two people. So it was little things like that that made you go, "There's more of a story behind it," and <laughs> but and there's a lot of stuff that didn't make it into the doco no because idea. it might have been a little bit sensitive, you know, um, particularly about. I mean, he's not here, so well, you know. Who's that? Shakes the cameraman. Oh, second, shakes the second cameraman. Unit. Yeah. Um, Did you cut the line out about him out. being a Robitussin yes, addict at the yeah, time? Yeah. So imagine my cameraman. His hands were like that. This is the other cameraman. This is the guy that shot it all in 16 by 9. He did all the, the second nine. unit stuff. And so at one point I had to take the camera out of his hands and leave him doing this while I did the shot for him. <laughs> that was the bit where you were falling down the stairs. Oh. Yeah, you didn't want to have too many takes of that. Because it, like I, I was looking at what was happening in the monitor and it was, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was, was like it? earthquake camp. He, he in fact, incredible. Um, on the set, it was. Oh, hang on, he's going to be like watching back the. Oh, the we'll cut footage that out. on we'll cut yeah. that. Out. that Forget up. I said Robitussin. <laughs> or meth. Or. Uh... Well, there, there was the apartment scene that we shot, and it was like, uh, the, you know, you had at the point, you know, you were a bit freaking out, thinking, are we going to get this done? And, and there was a lot of sort of anxiety happening. And so we, we broke from filming, we just, we'll just take a break and everyone will kind of collect the book. <coughs> and everyone came to me, do you want to go to my car and do some crystal meth? And I said to him, and I go, I've never done crystal meth before, but I've heard about it in a song. I think it's Third Eye Blind Sim Chunk on a lot. And I went, don't know, it sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> So I didn't. <laughs> I remember that it was out yeah. on the balcony. I was like, yes. What's Crystal? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And at that yeah, time, I think I was eating the Frankfurts out of a can. I was in the bedroom. The so I didn't. I, yeah. yeah, I didn't have really great sense of judgment, but yeah, oh. passed on that opportunity. But yeah, there are lots of little crazy things that happened on the film. Um, it just seemed like a good story to tell, especially because it was seemingly for quite a while, you know, Andrew's great shame, and oh, you know, a little bit of a shame, you know. No, I, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, what can I say? You know, I, I, I dreamt big. Yes. And um, it, it was not exactly how I imagined it to be. I mean, it was, it was, it was great. Yeah. For what it was. But by then, you know, I was, um, you know, already thinking about something else. What did you learn from the experience of it? Um, that everyone has a first film. And that was yours. And that's <laughs> and if you stick around, around yeah. 
you'll get to see it as well in, in all its, you know, warts and all glory. And I, I learned from making this doco too that I would have a dedicated sound guy on the next right, doco right. that I would do. Oh, I would yeah, have of course. Uh, better lighting. I mean, as we went through it, I, I bought an LED light for the unit and I bought an external mic, not the onboard mic. So I learned a lot of things while making this film and unfortunately a lot of the stuff that had to stay in just for the sake of staying in there. Mm. It's the old saying you learn but you do. by doing. Absolutely. That's how you actually do yeah. that. But it's, yeah. uh, listening to the stories, it sounds like everyone who worked on it had some kind of amazing experience during the shooting of it. Yeah. So uh, maybe if, in, if in, in spite of the in spite of themselves. Yeah. Although yeah, never we did say there was a lesbo curse that everyone you didn't make anything for well you did but then you kind of had the series of failures. I moved to Melbourne and stopped making any film related stuff for like eight or nine years. Yeah, that was your last on-screen role, was it? What? Oh no, you came back and did you do? Were you in one of the? No, no. I, never, I never actually tried to be an actress, right. so the whole McRide thing was never. No, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought you know, if the finished film isn't the product, then maybe it's just the experience that everybody had making it. Yeah. It Shall we open up anything? to a few questions because we've got to start the yes, film because no, it'll no, take no. us through to midnight. You know what I mean? Um, um, was it true that your editor was in fact sight impaired? I mean, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A, a silly question. Did um, you see the way he was looking he at the was, camera? Uh, he was well, side, <laughs> short not sided. looking at the camera. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, how difficult was that, Andrew? I mean, to to edit with yeah. Michael, it was pretty good. I mean, I I, I actually spent the whole time um, yelling at him, and um, he was very amenable. You know, uh, despite the fact that he couldn't quite see where to cut, I just go now. <laughs> And uh, he'd be that close to the monitor that he'd get a sense of, you know, what he was doing. And, uh, oh, why did you choose this first person? Uh, he, was, he was a friend of um, uh, Kim's. Okay. Uh, worked at council with Kim. Mm. And uh, after Jarrett said, under no circumstances will I ever edit this because you're a monster that just keeps on shooting and shooting <laughs> and shooting. And I will spend the next three years trying to get this into some sort of shape. I said, okay, um, uh, albino uh, council worker, next best thing. And, um, and yeah. Andrew, you, didn't, you never saw a showreel because this was the first of really anything he cut outside of, he was a bit of a train spotter, so he was a train enthusiast, so that's pretty much what he did. He shot a lot of train stuff. And oh, I didn't even know that. No, I found that out whilst I made the documentary. I figured that probably wasn't the most interesting thing to point in there. Because I was like, oh, <laughs> did, you know, did you show Andrew some of your work? And he said, well, I pretty much only film trains. And they go, oh, what did you do with it? And he goes, it was just for my collection. That's and good. I'm like, oh, well, so instead of trains, he was editing a train wreck. Actually, and that funny story about doing the interview with him, it was like the second interview I did, and we had arranged to do it somewhere, that fell through then. Suddenly Kim goes, we'll shoot it down here. We shot it by a freeway with an onboard mic on the fucking camera. We're shooting it and I'm like, yeah, it sounds going to be bad on this one. So we reshot it in Melbourne when he was down. Mm. But that was another valuable lesson. There was wow. a couple of reshoots with some of the interviewees, like yourself. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, uh, Karen says in, the, um, in her interview that no one's asked her for her autograph since that 2003 screening. I reckon you guys can break the curse. Someone please ask her for, a, for an autograph tonight. Oh God, please don't. No, do it! <laughs> Seriously, embarrass the hell out of her. You know, I reckon it would be awesome. It would be like everything coming full circle. In a weird, mutant kind of way. Totally. Yeah. So, um, any other questions? I think the movie spoke for itself. I think you found out way too much. Now we're going to watch the movie, movie don't we? Yeah, you know totally. I mean? Let's do it. Should we get stuck into it? You know, you can all come and have more of a chat in the lobby afterwards because you've got some merch, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Just exactly. like I said in the fucking movie. <laughs> there with your merch. Thank you yeah, so much there, for coming. There's always going to be t shirts. So. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, let's listen up. Folks, these guys. No! Deadly, fucking deadly.